I got revelation. And that revelation was, I want you to do it. You have to imagine this. Make the mind come into alignment with the Word of God. Jesus said the work of God is to believe. So if we can believe, all things are possible. The work is to get ourselves to the place where we believe it enough to see it and then take it and hold it and not let go of it. We know that all good things come from above according to the scripture. So we have the right to imagine and believe good things according to the word. And if we'll do that, I believe that's the generation that will change the world. I love to go into a difficult situation and ask for a word from God. I don't care whether it's a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. or it's pro I don't care about the classification of the word anymore. I want a solution. Lord, what do we do here? What do we need to do now? And I just know that he always wants to give us solutions. He always wants to give us answers. So I'm like, I'm going to take some chances here. <laughs> take the shell off the computer and put it over to the side. And I said, God, will you speak to me and show me what's wrong with my computer? And I just kind of put out my hand the way that I did when I ministered to people. Is this the problem? Is this the problem? And I moved my hand. I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is how I got started in information technology. Episode 3. I want to introduce you to our friend A.T. Snoots. My husband Tom and I first met A.T. when we were visiting Rick Joyner at his beach home. A.T. happened to be there because Rick Joyner is his spiritual father and he has had a long-standing friendship with him. What struck us instantly about A.T. is his clarity and his vision. He moves in the prophetic and most of all, he takes his gifts out into the business arena and gains solutions from heaven. The best way to describe AT is a prophetic businessman. This is so exciting to me because the Lord is able to move in every arena of our lives because everything we do is ministry. And yes, you can get supernatural insight into all things, including your business, and that becomes a testimony to the Lord. Abraham, the father of faith, was a successful businessman in the cattle industry of his time. In Genesis 13, we see that he was abundant in livestock and was also in charge of groups of herdsmen who managed his livestock on his behalf. The nature of his business allowed him to move freely from place to place as directed by God. And his business has expanded so much that he had to separate from his nephew Lot because the land could not contain them both. Abraham's success continued to flourish as he walked with God. As we all know, King Solomon was a prosperous king. He was an epitome of abundance, but he had to create this fortune with the guidance of the Lord because much of this did not exist when he first became king. King Solomon was an entrepreneur who had various business interests including international trade and merchant ships. In fact, in 1 Kings 9, we see that he encouraged trade and he was the only Jewish king with a trading fleet. It was through the supernatural gift of wisdom that King Solomon generated wealth by bringing peace to the kingdom and he was thus able to use his resources for production rather than protection that the Lord gave knowledge and understanding of every kind of literature and wisdom to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah on top of this Daniel was given insight into all manner of dreams and visions scripture says that when the king spoke to them he could find no one who could compare to these young men. 
this is what caused them to enter into the king's service. Today, the Holy Spirit is our ultimate business advisor. He lifts us up to gain acclaim and achieve excellence so that we become an example of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Commit your plans to the Lord and He will establish them. Let's start from the very beginning. Sure. Tell us a little bit about you. Sure. Yeah, we'd love to hear. So I, uh, I grew up in Virginia, and uh, I grew up in a pastor's home. So uh, I was inundated in the church at a very young age, and uh, very involved in the ministry, uh, sometimes against my own will. I was kind of one of those, I wasn't a rebellious child, but I was a, one that questioned a lot of things as a kid. I went to uh, Bible college here in Charlotte, and uh, while I was there, I learned a lot. But I also learned it wasn't really what I wanted to do there either. I was the guy that at the end of class, I'd go up and ask the professors questions and say, well, you know, the Bible, I don't think the Bible says what you said. I, the Bible says this. And I would begin to argue scripture just because I wanted to understand the subject. And uh, I wanted them to teach me. But a lot of times it would end up being a little argument. And I finally got to the place where some of the professors would say, we don't care if it's in the Bible or not. This is what we believe. And once I started to hear that, and I'd say, are you sure you mean that? And they'd say, well, this is what we believe. This is what we've always taught. Uh, once I got that as an answer, I realized this isn't really the path that I'm looking for. You know, I'm, I want to walk with the Lord. I want to know the Lord. I want to I want to walk in what he's called me to do. And I realized that just following religious people, even good hearted religious people, isn't going to take you down that road. So uh, I got out, got involved in a, in a ministry and started working in a ministry in Virginia. And it was during that time that I read a book called Some Said It Thunder. That was a book that was written about the Kansas City Prophets. And uh, when I started reading it, I just devoured it because I'd never read a book like that other than the Bible. All these crazy stories of these prophets, you know, Bob Jones and Paul Kane and all these guys. And I read it and, and I started to see myself in some of these things, you know, and, and people that I wanted to learn from. So I just devoured the book over and over and over. And I didn't even realize that these were people that were still alive. I thought this was a historical book. And once I found out, and someone told me that one of these guys was going to be speaking in Charlotte, North Carolina, I, uh, I, I just came alive. I was like, oh my God, I got to go down there. I got to go see what this is about. And it was Paul Kane. So I uh, found out that he would be speaking at Rick Joyner's ministry at Morningstar in uh, Charlotte and uh, drove down here for that. And it was just a small meeting, but it was powerful. And, and uh, I didn't get any life-changing words or anything, but I did see something that was a part of me. I saw the prophetic and, you know, I never wanted to say, oh, I'm a prophet or I'm prophetic or anything like that. I didn't identify myself that way, but I knew I dreamt a lot and the Lord would show me things. So um, after coming to the meeting for the first time, it just, it was like something was planted in me. I had to come back. I had to come back. This, this is what it's all about for me. And uh, so I started driving down every Friday night from uh, Virginia. I drive down three and a half hours every Friday, every Friday night to come down. And I met Rick. You know, these uh, meetings were hosted in his cabin at the time. So it was just a small place. And then it was back in the 90s uh, that this was happening. Uh, they started having the uh, Heart of David worship conference. And so I came down for that. And it was during that meeting that I saw a number of different people minister, but Paul Kane got up to minister. Yeah. And when he ministered, it was just phenomenal. Some of, you know, some of the things he would talk about, the Lord says it's going to rain, and then it would just start pouring down rain, you know, right on top of the building. And there were leaks in the building while he was speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, just amazing things that were happening. While it, and this is what I've been looking for. This is what I wanted, you know, to give my life to. So uh, I didn't meet Paul then. But um, he went back to Kansas City, and I got kind of involved with the ministry, or with the uh, ministry of uh, Morningstar from then forward. I uh, wanted to come down to the school. I was a second-year student in the School of Ministry, so I came down and um, loved it, and decided I wanted to work here. I wanted to be, you know, under Rick. I felt like he was a spiritual father. It wasn't just about discerning the spirits or, you know, seeing the gifts. It was also to have balanced teaching that supported that. And uh, Rick was one of those guys, when he got to speak, you know, he, he was a man of authority. When he spoke, his words uh, went deep because he could tell it wasn't just his opinion, it was just something that he had picked up from someone else, but these were words that he had studied in the scriptures for years, and it was revelation that the Lord had actually given him. 
so the words went deep. So I got involved in the ministry at that time and uh, uh, went to work for them, started doing audio editing. I worked in the accounting department. I uh, got involved in prophetic teams and prophetic ministry, went out with uh, a number of the different people that were in the uh, leadership at the time. We'd go into churches and we'd call people out and, you know, do the prophetic ministry. So that's where, really where I got started with all of it. Wow, so that's how you are gift to see the spirit develop yes and then it seems like the lord has done something very interesting and he's brought it to your work in it and technology yeah because that's what you do as well right? yes yeah so that it's really interesting I, I don't believe if i wouldn't have come to uh, morningstar i ever would have went this direction but i felt like the lord was calling me out of the ministry to go and get involved in business and uh and it was kind of a crazy thing because the way that i got started in it is while I was working for Rick, I of course I had my own computer, a little desktop computer, and I was doing audio editing at the time. And we were having problems with uh, my computer and a couple of other computers in the ministry, but um, our information technology guy had uh, had moved on. I, I don't know whether he was fired or he just moved on, but the guy that was over IT was no longer with the ministry. So we didn't have anybody to turn to to fix our stuff. And I had a deadline by that Friday to have some tapes over to Hosanna. We were using tapes back in those days. So I had a deadline and I think it was Monday or Tuesday. It was right at the beginning of the week, but my computer just wouldn't come on. So I got down and jiggled everything, moved everything around and nothing. Repi un you know, unplugged it, powered it back up, nothing. And I was so convinced, you know, I felt like if we can get up and we can prophesy to people, we can speak into their lives and God will give us their name, show us where they live, show us you know, details about their lives. Why wouldn't he do this in business? Why wouldn't he show us things about business? And I always looked up to Daniel and Joseph, you know, in the scriptures, these guys who went out, they were a part of the government. They had, you know, phenomenal stories of how God took them and used their gift in a place outside of Israel and outside of the church, you know, so to speak. So I was always thinking about that. I was thinking, if, if we can do these things when we go into churches and we can do this here at Morningstar, we can have small ministry teams, we can minister to people this way, surely God will speak to us and give us incredible things in business to help us prosper. Because that was always a big thing to me. You know, the scripture says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And you know, a lot of Christians don't talk about that. They talk about just being close to the Lord. And that's good. But there's, we got to look at what's important to the Lord. And if this is important to the Lord that we prosper and that we're in health, even as our soul prospers, it should be one of the priorities in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I've got, you know, a solid foundation to, to take a step, to take some chances. But I hadn't really thought that far ahead at that point. Yeah. I was just thinking, my computer's broken, i got to fix it. Yeah. So no one's in the room, so I take the cover off the computer. And I'm like, God, would you speak to me and show me what's wrong with this computer? And no one was there to question anything. It wasn't like being up in front of a church, you know. Was, there was no uh, pressure, is what I'm saying, you know. And in church, when you're on the spot, you've got to minister to people. If you're wrong, everybody knows you're wrong. If you're right, you know, everybody hears that you're right. But when you're alone, it doesn't really matter. So I'm like, I'm going to take some chances here. <laughs> take the shell off the computer and put it over to the side. And I said, God, will you speak to me and show me what's wrong with my computer? And I just kind of put out my hand the way that I did when I ministered to people. And when I put out my hand, I just I said, is it, is it this? And I was, uh, even from a kid, I would ask the Lord yes and no questions. Lord, should I do this or should I do that? Or should I go here? Should I go there? And it was easy to, to feel a yes or a no, you know, one way or the other. And to, be, to find out I'm accurate later. So I said, God, is it this? Is this the problem? Is this the problem? And I moved my hand. I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is how I got started in information technology. Wow. So I started out, I put my hand on it, and I finally came to a place. I felt like the, it was a yes. And I moved it again. I said, oh, is this wrong? I felt like, no, it's nothing. I put it here. I, said, I didn't know what these parts were. Yeah. I had no idea. I'd never worked on a computer. So I, uh, I decided to take this piece out. I thought I'll go to the store and I'll see if I can get another part like it. I went to uh, CompUSA, it was a big computer store at the time here in Charlotte. So I took this piece out, went down there and I said, can you give me another one like this? Because I didn't even know where to look for something like that. They said, sure, come over here. So we walk over and uh, it's faith. <laughs> and it was, still, it wasn't as pressuring as being up in front of a crowd. So this was easy for me. And I was like, but it was fun because what if I'm right? 
You know, what if we're right? Now we're finding out God will speak to us in these things. So I took it, go back, bought this piece, put it in my computer, struggled with getting it back in because I didn't really pay attention to how to get it out. But I got it back in, put the lid back on, started it up, and the computer came right up. Didn't have any problem, and I met the deadline by the end of the week. I got all my work done. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. I had another opportunity. I didn't want this opportunity. <laughs> but my boss, who was Rick's right-hand guy at the time, he came in the room and he said, hey, I heard you fixed your computer. And I said, yeah, yeah, fix my computer. And he said, well, I, I got a computer I need you to fix. And I said, no, I said, you don't understand. I said, no, I, I said, you know, I really, I did this crazy thing. I said, I just kind of prayed over it. He said, yeah, I heard about that. And I said, well, I, I don't think I should do that on your computer. You know, I don't, if anybody's computer, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess up yours or Rick's. So he kept a very serious face and he said, I want you to come fix my computer. He said, after you get done with work, come up to my house. And I said, okay. And I was thinking, oh my God, this is worse than being up on the stage in front of everybody, you know? So, so. Computers at stake. Right, right. And he told me his family photos, I think, were on it. And uh, that's what he was trying to recover. So it was a very pressuring situation. And I said, I just don't want to touch it. Anyway, I go up afterwards. And, uh, he takes me over to his computer. It's kind of like going over to a dead body. <laughs> like, this is the one that has to be resurrected. That's how it felt. I'm like, oh, no. And he's like, okay, do your thing. <laughs> I said, no, I, I really, you know, just, let's just see. I'll take a look at it, but I don't know if this is going to work. He said, just do your thing. Just, just try. So I said, all right. I took the lid off of his computer, and I put my hand down. I said, Lord, I said, what's wrong with this computer? I said, is it this? Is it this? And he just stood there kind of staring at me like I was crazy, and rightfully so. But I did it until I came to a part. And a lot of problems are software-based, I learned years later. But I just happened to get two computers in a row that had hardware problems. This one, I put my hand over it, and I felt what the problem was. And I said, okay, I think this is it. And he said, really? And I said, yeah. And he said, why? And I said, I just, I just asked, and I felt like it's a yes, this is the problem. So he said, here, go down here and get the part. And he gave me his credit card. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess with this. Because I didn't know what was at risk, you know. Anyways, I went down, bought the part, came back and put it in his computer and it started right up. And everything was there. So that was how I got started in working in computers. And of course, I, I didn't just continue to do things that way. I began to read about it. Read about computers and uh, operating systems and learning about how to fix things. But I took over the IT department at Morningstar. Wow, he's gone. That's amazing. That crazy? So you went by faith in the beginning. You didn't know about it, and it's almost like the Lord filled in the gaps, and you were led by the Holy Spirit, where yeah. you were like knowledge. Yes. And then at the same time, you know, with, with time, you built yourself up yes. with knowledge as well. Yes. So, so I have to tell you that, the, and Rick always wants me to point this out when I talk about that story. The reason that I even wanted to work with the computer or tried to was because I'd heard Paul Kane speak in one of his meetings at Morningstar and he talked about that the Lord had given him revelation to build a computer and that he built this computer by revelation. He put parts together the way that God told him to put them together. The Spirit directed him. And so that was a you know, that was really in my world. I was like, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear about God telling people about how to help people, you know, physically, how to work in technology, how to do all these different things because I believed in it, but I hadn't seen it happen. So when he started speaking about that, I was like, I can do that. I believe I can do that. And I was like, well, he's already done it, but I just believe I can do that. So when the time came that my computer was broken, I remember that moment and the inspiration just kind of came up from what then I was like, I can do this. I know that the gift, that God will lead me with the gift and show me what to do. Yeah. You know, I believe he wants to do a lot more of those things with us. Absolutely, and that's what I'm interested in. Good. Because ministry is not 
traditional that's right new traditional ministry that's right he's always doing a new thing yes and there are many who are called to serve the lord in whichever capacity that they are led to yes and just be a testimony yes that's what it's about at the end of the day it's being testimony yeah. Because if, if we go into a situation where there's problems, whether it's in business or in our families or anywhere in our life, and we don't have the solutions, it's not a good testimony if we're carrying the light of the world in us. Why do you have all the answers inside and you can't come up with an answer to solve the problem? You know? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of all generations. Ask your father and he will inform you your elders, and they will tell you. Jeremiah 10.21 For the shepherds have become stupid, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they have not prospered, and all their flock is scattered. But, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, he who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. And, and so I felt like taking that into business. So anyways, I went from there, um, I, I guess about a year and a half later, um, I, I felt like it was time to go. I felt like I needed to get involved in business and, and take some crazy risks like I'd done, you know, in ministry. It was time to do some things in business. And uh, I decided I wanted to do a lot of work on the road. I wanted to get out, see the world a little bit, but I wanted business to pay for it. And I was looking for a technology position. I was looking for something from these skills that I had acquired and the gift that, you know, that I was kind of developing to work with technology and kind of leaning on discernment and word of knowledge to, to do things. And I, uh, I was looking for something that would be a good match. And I went through all of these listings and I saw this one that said that I would be traveling, I think 85% of the time. And I'd be working with the government and um, that I would be working with computers and telecom. And it got, I was very interested. I was like, oh, that sounds exciting. But there were tons of exciting things. And this one just looked the most exciting. And it said that you had to have a, a, bachelor's of, a bachelor of science degree or a computer science degree in order to get the job. I was like, I don't care, you know. I, I can still call. I'd seen God do too many things at that point to say, well, I can't get the job because I don't have a degree or I can't do it. I thought, you know, let's just wait and see what happens. Let's take a chance. I was riding around one day from Morningstar, just working on computers from one um, campus to the other. And uh, I called the company up and I said, hey, I saw your ad. I said, I you know, want to talk to you about that. And they said, well, today's our very last day. If you're interested in the job, you need to come now. And I said, well, I'm wearing shorts and I got a t-shirt on. I said, I don't have time to, you know, to come over. And they said, just come over anyway. We don't care. So they sent me the address. They sent me a link and uh, I clicked the link and printed out the directions and I just drove and followed the directions. You know, we didn't have GPSs back then. Followed the directions and the directions took me all the way back to Presley Road to a building directly across the road from Morningstar where we were having church at the time. And that was where one, one of my offices were, were located. So directly across the road from Morningstar is this business that said come and look. I had no clue that it was there. I thought it, it could have been in a different city. So I go in and, uh, and I like the people. It was a small business. And I walked in and they said, hey, you know, it's so nice to meet you. And we walked around and everybody else was wearing shorts. So I was very comfortable. <laughs> but they started asking me questions. And the interesting thing was they asked me questions about things that I'd already done. And they didn't know that day I'd already fixed a couple of computers that had, one of them had a uh, video card problem. And so I walked in and, uh, you know, it's kind of fresh in my memory how I fixed it. The, uh, the owner of the company finally had his time with me and he walked around and said, you know, we really like you, we like your personality, but what can you do technically, you know, we've got some things, maybe you could take a look at a couple of the problems we're having in the back. Now they already had IT guys in there, they already had guys that worked with computers in there, and I had kind of an I don't care attitude, not in a bad way, but just confident, I didn't really care if I got the job, I'll get something else if this isn't the one. But I go in the back and he said, so we got this computer here. He said, could you take a look at it? Maybe tell us what you think's wrong with it. I said, sure. And I just immediately started saying, Lord, can you tell me what, <laughs> what's wrong with this? 
what is wrong with this computer? And I'm trying to hear, you know, anything while we're walking towards it. But I immediately, I, I thought of video card. Now, I've heard the word video card, but I've been working with video card that day. So I thought, well, I don't know if it's just a coincidence or not. And he, I said, so what's wrong with it? He said, well, we can't get the screen to come up. I said, okay. And I thought, well, that sounds like in line with the problem with the video card. And I said, I think it's your video card. He said, no, it's not. We've already checked that. We've tested that. He said, I think we put three different video cards into this today. He said, that's not the problem. And I said, oh, but I just like faith just came up and I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said, I think you need to try it again. He said, no, we've already had three. And I said, did you use a new video card? He said, no, we didn't want to open another one. I said, well, I think you need to use a new one. And they finally, they all looked at each other. Everybody's looking at me. But I just had this confidence, this is what's wrong with it, even though at first it was, you know, a, it was a kind of embarrassing moment because I wasn't sure if I was right. But the more pressure that came, the more confident I became. And I said, check the video card. So they unwrapped this new one, they put it in there, and the computer came up. That was what was wrong with it. So he said, wow. He said, okay. He said, so come in here, we have a test for you. Gave me the test. I got everything 100% correct. And at the end of it, he said, if you want the job, it's yours. He said, today was our last day. He said, we've already had, I think, 22 or 23 people that had come in to interview. He said, if you want the job, he said, it's yours. He said, we know you don't have a degree yet. He said, but we'll help you with classes or anything that you want to go through. We want you to work here. So that's how I got started in it. Wow, awesome. So when you looked at the computer at first, you just asked the Lord, Lord, what's wrong with the computer? And you heard in the spirit, what was wrong with it? Or you felt? that it was a video call. Kind of both. No, no, I didn't do the thing where I was putting out my hand to, to feel. At that at that point, you know, I, the Lord speaks to us in all kinds of ways, you know. And over the years, you, you get used to one way or another way. And if He doesn't speak that way, sometimes you just miss Him altogether because you're expecting Him to speak to you in the way that He always has. And that He doesn't want us to stay in that place. And we've got to learn to uh, hear him in the different ways. And today, I, I love to hear the Lord in anything. You know, I'll, I'll write out. Sometimes I'll get an answer off the back of a truck. I'm like, I've asked a question, and there it is. And so, you know, the, our confidence has to be in ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. There's, there's no contingencies there. It's, it's a declaration that it will happen if you ask. John 16.24 until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Luke 11, 9 and 10 So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. So we can have confidence in that, and if we have faith in that, I believe that God will speak every single time. He will give us an answer. It may not always be what we want, but I believe He'll give us an answer. So I went into it with that uh, with that attitude and I ended up traveling uh, for about 15 years working for the company doing a lot of work for the government which I love doing I love doing work for the government as, as a contractor but there were a number of situations we'd go into and uh, I'd ask the Lord for you know revelation I'd ask him to speak to me uh, on the job we went to uh, Italy and we had a really big job there a multi-million dollar job Sometimes I would go in and manage a, a job with a few people and I would do training and send the guys home. But this time I went in by myself and I was supposed to be there for a couple of weeks and then come back home. Got there and I was there for about two weeks and we had accomplished almost nothing. And it wasn't anything that I had done wrong, but there were problems uh, technically that they were having, that General Dynamics was having on the, uh, the job that we brought, had come into for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And um, anyways, they, I'd come in each day and they'd say, ah, oh, you can go sightsee and go do what you want to do. So I was getting paid just to travel and, you know, enjoy myself. Yeah. But I came in one day and they said, well, we're probably going to have to send you home and, and have you come back at another time. And I didn't want to leave. I, I was like, why? 
And they said, well, we're having these problems, you know, we can't get the channel banks to work properly. We're not getting connection down in Siganella, so we can't get these things talking to each other. I had no idea what they were talking about, but I was like, really? And I was thinking, I need God to speak to me. And I, I'd gotten comfortable enough to where I would speak up, or at least take a chance, you know, and, and, and uh, say what I thought. I wouldn't tell them that God said this to me, yeah. but um, I said, I said to the Lord, I said, God, I know that you know right now, in your mind, you know what's wrong with this. Will you just give me the word? Show me what is wrong with this. And I didn't know how it would come. I didn't know if, you know, I was going to read something in a book or, I, you know, the word would come to my ear or I'd see something, have a vision. I, I didn't know, but I knew that God would speak to me. Or I hoped very strongly. I wasn't 100% convinced. I was just like, I know he will if I can believe. So um, we start walking and uh, the guy says, you think you know what's wrong? And I said, yeah, I think I do. And I wasn't sure, but I heard something. So we're walking along and he's like, uh, what do you want to explain? I said, well, when we get up here, I'll explain it to you. So I walk with an airman down into uh, uh, an area in the back that's um, behind closed doors. And they said, hey, this guy thinks he knows what's wrong. And I was thinking, oh, great. I didn't know all these people are going to be in here. And they all turn and look at me and I said, I said, it's a twisted pair. And they looked over and said, twisted pair? I said, yeah, I believe it's a twisted pair. And I saw that. I, I, I heard that, but I also saw like, why are, that's just kind of the way it was communicated to me. And I wasn't sure if that was right, but it was no different to me than standing up in front of someone and prophesying. This is my area, you know, I'm going to prophesy. I believe it's a twisted pair. And they said, wow. And they looked at each other. They said, we already checked for that. So then I knew it was a real thing. So once I knew it was a real thing, I had confidence. I was like, wow, this, God gave me this. You know, this is, this is the problem. They know the solution. They just didn't know that that was the problem. So they said, well, we already checked for a twisted pair. We'll check again. And I said, this is it. And the, and the guy said, well, you know, this guy's pretty smart. You know, a lot of stuff I asked him, he's been right about. They didn't know I was asking God, you know, questions on a lot of things. But anyways, they... Uh, they came back to me a couple hours later and they said, get ready to go down to Siganella. I said, really? And they said, yeah. They said, um, we fixed the problem or we're fixing the problem. And I said, okay. I said, what was it? And he said, you know, it's the twisted pair. So I said, okay. <laughs> so, so I went down to Siganella and worked down there with some guys and it was, it was an incredible experience. You know, I, I love to go in these places in any that it's terrible to say, but I love to go into a difficult situation yeah. and ask for a word from God. I don't care whether it's a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, or it's pro I don't care about the classification of the word anymore. I want a solution. Lord, what do we do here? What do we need to do now? And I just know that He always wants to give us solutions. He always wants to give us answers. Sometimes we have to press. Sometimes we have to look for them, and we have to knock. We have to keep knocking until we get them. But it's, there's so many incredible stories that can be shared about how God does these things. And I believe he, I don't believe it's just he chooses a specific person because uh, they've served him for so long or they've worshipped enough or they've prayed enough. I believe he wants all of us to do these things. This is a calling that he's given all of us. And the worship, the prayer, all those things are great, but it's to prepare us to do these things so that we can come out of there and be more effective. Right. The scripture says you don't have because you don't ask. That's right. And we've heard amazing testimonies and we've had we have amazing testimonies too of really asking for unusual things. Yes. If you need an idea, you need a solution for anything, ask the Lord. He's a genius. That's it. Habakkuk two one four. The just shall live by faith. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time but, at the end, it will speak, and it will not lie, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry.
Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. You took captive every thought and imagination and you placed them exactly where your vision was. That's it. Right, you lined it up to the Lord's will. That's it. So the imagination has to align with the Lord's will. That's it. That's what it's about. It really is. Yeah. And you know what? I, uh, I, I spent a, a lot of time over the years just asking God to speak to me, to show me things. And I can say I prayed this many hours, or I worshipped, or I went to these, this many conferences. I've done, but that's not what it's about. That makes us, it helps define what we believe so that we can focus on what's most important, you know? You know, in church, you start to pray for people, and God begins to speak to you. You go into a place, and maybe the Lord will give you their name, or show you something incredible that, you know, for me, that was life changing. I was like, that's all, if God would just give me one name, that would mean everything to me that you know this would I'd be in heaven and then I started to get names and it, and at first it was great and then I realized that this isn't all there is to it that's great but it's only a tool this isn't really the end of the thing this is just the beginning nothing nothing six months I gave I did everything I possibly could but at the end of that I got revelation and that revelation was I want you to do it you have to imagine this. Make the mind come into alignment with the Word of God. Jesus said the work of God is to believe. So if we can believe, all things are possible. But it's not, all, it, it's not possible if we're only going to believe what we see with our eyes. Faith is a law. We, when we go to pray, we're not begging God to do something for us that He's not sure if He wants to do or not. If it says in the scriptures, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ, we don't need to wonder, is he thinking today he may not want to do something good for me, you know? The work is to get ourselves to the place where we believe it enough to see it, and then take it and hold it, and not let go of it. And then walk away, and throughout the day it becomes difficult. We, hit, we begin to forget, we lose, then you go back to that moment again. God, I need this for my family. God, I'm believing for a healing for someone. And I've seen this work in healings. I've seen it work with uh, finances. I've seen it work with business. I know that these are principles that God has given us to live by. And if we can take these, I believe that you can raise up a generation of people that are believing the right things, imagining things that are in line with the Word of God. We know that all good things come from above, according to the scripture. So we have the right to imagine and believe good things according to the word. And if we'll do that, I believe that's the generation that will change the world. That's what we're called to do. We're called to change the world, not just in the church, but every place that our foot goes. Every, every place. Amen. Fantastic. <laughs>